What's up guys, today I'm going to very quickly be going over how I did the mix for the Trader set that I most recently uploaded. For those who don't know, I mix all of my sets live on Twitch, where I am always answering any questions about bands I've worked with, tips for getting into live sound, and going in depth on every decision I make to bring the mix together for the full set upload video. Be sure to give my Twitch channel a follow to see how all my full set videos are mixed and be the first to know what videos will be coming to the channel next. I have the link in the description below. All right, let's go ahead real quick and listen to what the finished product is and compare it to the raw multi-tracks. Starting with the kick drum here, let's just go ahead and take a listen to what the kick sounds like by itself with no processing on it. So it's a pretty good sounding kick, pretty punchy, has a good amount of low end to it. The first thing we did is we put a uh, light expander on it. Nothing too crazy, just a uh, 1.3 to 1 ratio, fast attack. Decently fast release, but you'll notice that for the most part it is unnoticeable when I turn it on or off. So we're not fully gating the kick, but we're doing enough that when the kick isn't being hit we're not letting in any of the rumble from the amps or the monitors. Let's take a look here at the main processing we're doing here on the kick, which is the SSL channel. I'm going to go ahead and bypass both sections of the channel. And we'll start with the EQ. We're going with very high amounts of gain on the um, upper, mid-range, and high frequencies, as well as making a pretty big cut around 400 hertz. These could be considered too drastic in some cases, but with a really clean kick signal like this, um, it's pretty easy to make these big boosts without bringing too much unwanted noise in. I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit of it and then bring the EQ in. As you can see, that's adding a lot of attack, um, cleaning up the muddiness a little bit, and also just allowing the kick to sound a lot cleaner uh, in terms of the transients and the playing coming through uh, exactly how it's played and not getting too muddy at all. As far as the dynamic section goes, um, just not using any of the gating here because we do have the dynamic set to the channel out, which means it comes after the EQ. The compressor is set to about a three to one ratio I'll just set it right there. And we have the threshold pretty high. Uh, we have the fast release, but we do have the fast attack turned off. So I'll go ahead and show you what that's doing to the total sound of the kick. So as you can see, it's not doing a whole lot, um, but it is making everything stand out a little bit more and it's gonna help carry the presence of the kick drum in the overall mix. The last thing we have on the kick here is just a little bit of added EQ with the Waves Renaissance EQ six band version, uh, taking a little bit more of the mid range out, adding a lot more high end, but also pulling out a frequency that we felt was a little bit too sharp and then a little bit more low end just to help it cut through a bit more. Go ahead and show you what that's doing. I'm just gonna loop an individual kick. So as you can see, the kick is getting a little bit stronger presence, but it's also making the background bleed less muddy. So we have to think about the fact that this is a signal with a lot going on in the background, and we have to make sure that that's as clean as possible as well. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the snare without any processing on it. As far as EQ goes, we have a boost of about 5 dB around 4.8 K. We have another boost of about 8 dB at 8 K with the bell turned on. This takes the EQ channel and moves it from a shelf to a bell. 
And we're also making a pretty drastic cut here at around, let's say, 800 hertz. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that EQ is doing to the snare drum. Also, we have a boost of, at around 230 of about 5 dB. So you can hear a pretty good amount of cymbal bleed being brought in. We'll actually back this off a little bit just so you can hear how much that is bringing it in. But we aren't using any sort of gating. Um, I find with the live performances, it's a little too obvious when you do gating on the shells. In the room, it sounds fine, but in the recording, it gets it's just too hard to make sure that it works consistently throughout the entire set. So I'd rather just work around it and leave everything without a gate on it. As far as the compressor goes, we're going pretty heavy with the compression. It does once again in the channel out, which means it comes after the EQ section of the plugin. Go ahead and show you what that's doing. Without it. And with it. So it's making the snare sound a lot bigger in the sense of uh, more in your face. A little bit more EQ added on top of it. We're taking even more of that ringing out with that 1K dip here and then adding more stick attack and a lot more body with this very wide band EQ. Just making the drum sound overall more punchy. All right, as far as the toms go, I'm not gonna go track by track basis. I'm just gonna kind of put all the plugins up on the screen for you to look at. And you can uh, pause the video and take note of what each one's doing. We have Tom 1, Tom 2, and Tom 3 from left to right. I'm just gonna play this section without the EQs and then I'm gonna bring them in. So these are the Toms without the EQs. And with it, And once again, we're not using any gating on these shells. Bring in a little bit of reverb. Same with the snare. And we'll just go ahead and listen to the shells together. I'm not going to go over the parallel compression for the kick. But I'll go ahead and bring the reverbs in and all of the rest of the processing. And we'll go ahead and listen to the drums by themselves. And here's that same section without any processing. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the bass, which is just a direct out signal, and see how it was going without any EQ on it. So you can hear there's a good amount of distortion and a lot of um, accentuation on the pick attack. So you can hear a lot when the pick is hitting the strings. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first layer of EQ we did to clean the bass up a little bit. So we're making the pick attack even more pronounced, but we're also taking a little bit out of the muddiness in the mid-range, making it sound a little bit more uh, sharp and full, and bringing out a little bit more of the low end, just because it was so heavy on the strings and the pick sounds. Beyond that, we also have an SSL channel that's doing a little bit of EQing and quite a bit of compression. Go ahead and take a look at what that's doing.
just to keep the low end under control, we're using the C4 multiband compressor. Um, just using the mid range and the low for this plugin, and all it's doing is making sure that the notes are pretty consistent in volume throughout, no matter how low the bass note goes. So I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, just it's not doing a whole lot, but you can see what it's doing. This is mainly just making every note sound consistent and not overly wobbly with how much we're boosting the low end. This is just kind of keeping everything under control. All right, I'm gonna set up the EQ for the left guitar on the left here and the EQ for the right guitar on the right. And we're just gonna go ahead and listen to both guitars with and without the EQ. So the main thing we're accomplishing with the guitar EQ here is cleaning up the low end a little bit, making it not sound so muddy, but the main focus is accentuating the mid-range, making sure that these low tuned guitars can cut through the mix, especially with the heavy processing on the drums and bass. And just like with the bass, we're using the C4 multiband compressor, we're just using the low band on this, and all we're doing here is making sure that the low end stays pretty consistent throughout and prevents the guitar from getting too muddy when there's heavy palming going on. So this does make the guitar sound a lot cleaner, uh, a lot more mid-range, um, and it just overall will help it cut through the mix. So as far as vocals go, we can see that there are some spots where it gets to the clipping range. Um, as far as the live set goes, this was never too much of an issue, but there is a little bit of clipping in the recording. Uh, I just got the mic pre down to a level where he wasn't clipping the entire time, but there was still the occasional peaks that hit red. We do have the input trim in the uh, SSL channel here, just to you know make sure that it's not clipping on the input, but we are still gonna hear an audible amount of clipping through the microphone. As far as vocal EQ goes, I'll show you what it's doing uh, without it, and then I'll bring it in. Everybody's up with my possession! It's on all man, now see us ascend! Everybody use a move for the raw progression! When will the rest of the fucking listen? So the EQ is actually doing quite a bit. It's making the vocals sound a lot clearer. We're taking a lot of the low frequencies out. We're taking everything in the microphone that makes his vocal sound muddy. And we're adding a lot of the high mids and high frequencies here. Um, it's pretty necessary with how much processing goes on in these live recordings that I get the vocal sounding as clear and add as much presence as possible without bringing the cymbal bleed out too much. Just for comparison with the guitars, you can hear how much this EQ makes it sound more present. It's pretty common for raw vocals to sound muddy like that just because of the microphone. Uh, so it's not uncommon to see this much EQ going into my vocal tracks for these types of uh, recordings. And the compressor is a 2 to 1 with a fast attack, fast release, and I just kind of brought the threshold down to the point where the vocal levels were pretty consistent. Everybody's up with my possession! It's on all man, now see us ascend! Everybody use a move for the raw progression! When will the rest of the fucking listen? Everybody's up with my- Everybody So this is just keeping the levels pretty consistent throughout. We do have another layer of compression added to it with a lot of makeup gain, but this is another faster compressor with a 2.3 to 1 ratio. Uh, we do have the knee set at 3.3 dB, and I brought the threshold down to the point where there's a pretty consistent amount of gain reduction when he was going for those large peaks. And this pretty much sets the volume to be consistent throughout the entire set with me not having to worry too much about anything else. 
Everybody drop a weapon assassin! It's all of an NLC assassin! Everybody use a me for the role progression! We want the rest in the fucking lesson! And once again, we'll listen to what this is doing compared to the guitars under it. Everybody drop a weapon assassin! It's all of an NLC assassin! Everybody use a me for the role progression! We want the rest in the fucking lesson! And then here's a little trick that I will talk about in a later video that I do use on quite a bit of my channels here. I am using a de with a very low setting just to take care of cymbal bleed that goes on when he's not doing any vocals. I'll go ahead and play the cymbal bleed in this long gap between vocals here. With how much we boosted in the high range, it's kind of unavoidable that we're going to have cymbal bleed, but in some cases it's worse than others. This actually isn't too bad because of how loud of, loud of a vocalist he is. But I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, just how much this helps with cleaning up the signal. You can see we're getting pretty close to 6 dB of gain reduction just off the high end frequencies. And the reason we do this is because we are going to very heavily limit the vocal after all of that just to bring it up even more to the front of the mix because the vocals are the most important part of the mix as far as where they sit. Uh, they can't be too loud or too quiet. They have to be in that sweet spot. And that limiter is dialed in by using the link in the middle, and we find the point where we're getting a consistent amount of volume, and then we just use the output ceiling second to find the sweet spot as far as volume goes. Everybody drop a weapon assassin! It's all of an NLC assassin! Everybody use a me for the role progression! We want the rest in the fucking lesson! And then we do have a little bit of a delay and reverb on top of that. And I'll just go ahead and unmute that and you can hear what it's doing. Everybody's up a weapon assassin! It's all of an NLC assassin! Everybody use a me for the role progression! We want the rest of the fucking lesson! So yeah, that's just a very quick summary of some of the things that were done in the mix stream when we did this video. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can see how all these sessions are brought together from nothing done on any channel to the complete finished product. Most streams are around two to three hours, and I go over every single decision that's made. I interact with any questions that anybody might have. So feel free to hop over to the Twitch channel sometime, and uh, I'm always down to answer any further questions you have about any past videos I've done or just go over the mix that I'm working on with you guys. I'll be posting videos like this frequently. Uh, just for those of you who can't make the live streams, I figure this is easier than posting the entire two to three hour upload. So hopefully you guys look forward to seeing more of these in the future, getting a closer look at what like some of the raw tones are like from some of the bands I post, and just to see how certain things come together depending on what kind of tracks we're working with. Thanks guys for checking out this mix summary video and I'll see you guys with a new upload in the next few days. Thanks.